Welcome back. So when we last left off, we had put the wings on in order to um, give Jeff a chance to do the final fitment on the cowling. And uh, here you can see he's done a nice job and got it all lined up and drilled the holes where it's going to all uh, screw together and put clecos in there. So the next job there is to uh, get all the nut plates put in behind there on the back side of all those various intersections. And so having that done, it was time for me to get ready to take the engine off. And this will be the last time that it comes off. And the main reason it's coming off is because it would be very difficult to get the aircraft out of the shop with the engine on. And I've mentioned this before, what we're going to do to get it out of the shop is basically stand it up on its main gear and sort of about a, a 60 degree angle with nose high. Uh, using uh, two forklifts probably, one on either side, and then just walk it out the door sideways and then let the nose back down again. And we just wouldn't be able to do that with the um, with the engine on. So uh, yeah, begins the task of uh, just getting the things disconnected that need to be disconnected. And what I'm doing right now here is just uh, removing um, a couple of the pieces of the intake plumbing out of the way um, that would be in the way of the actual hoist so um, just getting that done and then I can uh, put the chain hoist on top there and then uh, hook that up to the forklift and I'd already done most of the other uh, disconnections like um, you know disconnected the wiring harness which you saw uh, last time and and uh, you know some of the other electrical connections and you know the AC lines and things like that that were in the way or that we're going to be, uh, you know, that remain on the fuselage uh, when the engine gets removed. So anyway, um, getting all this out of the way, um, it was time to get the forklift in place. So here we are, and I've got it um, just hooked there on one of the forks, taking the load off there with our little load balancer, and uh, just getting prepared to get the bolts out and uh, and get it off of there. And to help me out, I remembered last time that we actually had a little cargo strap um, going towards the back there that was sort of um, helping pick up some of that weight there where the uh, redrive is. So I've put that back in place and I can just sort of ratchet up on that to keep the engine nice and level as it comes off. And uh, now we're ready to go. So Jeff's driving the rig and you see we've already got the bolts out. I kind of forgot to turn the camera on as we were about to do it, but here you can see the whole thing comes off, um, all the fluids still in it, all the cooling and all that sort of stuff still in it, just disconnected, you know, the fuel lines and, and uh, the AC wasn't charged or anything yet, so that wasn't a big deal, but anyway, basically you can just take the whole thing off. And it didn't really take that long uh, to get it sorted out, um, to take it off, and over there we just basically put a couple of bolts back into the old engine stand there, just to hold it for now. And then, uh, you know, ultimately we'll be um, taking it off there and transporting it up to the airport in the in the coming weeks. At some point, I'm not sure exactly when, but that's the goal. And then we'll probably have a forklift up there briefly just to lift it back into place again. Just makes life easy. Although possibly uh, just an engine hoist, depending on uh, how we transport it and what we transport it on. So, uh, yeah, that's that job. Uh, done getting it off there and you know now I can do a couple more things that I need to do there around the firewall of the of the fuselage just clean up things and get the AC uh, lines all sorted out there so that's good and as you can see here now we've just got it bolted up there and uh, Jeff's gonna take the weight off or take the load off there and disconnect it so yeah not that difficult really <laughs> and uh, no drama nothing got but broken nobody got hurt so that's good and yeah, one of the other things I'll be doing too on the firewall there is putting the shielding on there the heat shielding that we have which is kind of just this gold stuff we're going to use you know people have recommended use stainless steel but the thing's freaking heavy enough as it is and uh, you know having to put a whole bunch of holes and stuff in that stainless steel and work around those ears would just be a real nightmare so I'm, I'm not planning on doing that and I uh, wanted to show you here so Devin had uh, uh, last week at the end of the week had put the um, the nut plates there in the wings um, the trailing or the root edges of the wings there are the ones that made up to uh, the cowling so that, that job's done and uh, he also 
uh, did the same thing on uh, the lower cowling part as you can see here so there's a couple of different places there where you know we need to have uh, nut plates you know and I looked into using other fasteners and stuff that are there but you know these ones really hold the thing together tight and they don't cost five bucks each so and we have quite a lot of them so five dollars each would be just a bit much uh, anyway so um, utilizing the forklift again I've got the parachute there all um, sort of in a sling and getting ready to put that in and uh, meanwhile as you can see here Jeff's done a little uh, layup there over the seam the lower seam there of the straight tank on the one side and on the other side so he's uh, you know just closing out there where all these overlap joggles are so there's the other one there and I think it's just a layup of our medium stuff that we use on there and then ultimately you know the peel ply comes off and it'll get a little bit of filler and sanded and Devin's been working on the ailerons there they got uh, another coat of primer uh, on Friday and uh, as you can see just sanding those so they're getting close to being done I think they just get three coats all together so uh, not long and they'll be finished even more and here did, uh, Jeff's getting ready to do a layup there uh, on the um, little transition there between the firewall and the fuselage and because if you remember we had to sort of trim back that flange because um, the firewall was put in the wrong position uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, this is our little connector there. I got the back shell and I started putting everything together and I got it all done and then I went to plug it into the unit and it turns out it doesn't fit. And it's supposed to be exactly the same connector. It has 37 pins. It has almost all the same little tabs and everything in it, but it's not the right one. So I need to say I had to order another one and then, God, that thing's just killing me and it's just oh, driving me crazy. Uh, anyway, so here just on the layup there and both sides of the firewall there in to where it sort of mates with the fuselage And as I said, that was because we had to cut the flange off because when we put the fuse or when we put the firewall on We had it like just an eighth of an inch too low and it wasn't lining up. So Anyway, that's fixed and uh, here's the uh, parachute uh, Just about to get ready to lowered or to being lowered into the fuselage again using the forklift and, you know, we could have done it by hand, but it's easier to do it this way because you can just slowly let it in. It's, it's a snug fit in there. Uh, so there you can see it's in and just the straps just sort of laying there. Got to arrange everything and the rocket's in there. Uh, just temporarily in there right now. I've still got to uh, sort out the uh, exhaust tube for that and also uh, the cable. But uh, if you look up there, well, there's the, the basically the parachute bag right there. So, uh, yeah, it fits in there, all right? There's still sort of some room in the baggage area, but, you know, prototype. There's a lot of stuff in there that we could potentially move later on. Not the parachute, but the other things like the fuel pumps and stuff. And there's the engine sitting on the stand. Just wanted to show you again what that looks like. So I will be pulling the redrive off of there and having a little look-see inside just to see after that 10-minute run that we did to see if there's any um, wear or how things sorted out uh, on those bearings. And so... Uh, onto the parachute again so here's the activation handle or cable or whatever you want to call it so I've pulled that through I had to drill a hole in the aft bulkhead there and fed it through but that was the plan all along and uh, here's those layups that Jeff did or some of the other ones actually over the seams there and it's got the peel ply off there now so as I said they just need like a little bit of filler and some sanding there and it'll be all nice and smooth and and ready to prime up so there's the other one over there still some masking tape on that front edge of the strake tank so yeah things have come along you know starting to do sort of you know this finished sort of body work on things but you know every time you turn around there's another job to do on this project it's amazing how much work there is I mean I hope you guys sort of have some sort of appreciation I certainly had no idea all the st steps that were involved and I'm just sort of getting through them as they come up as much as we can so there's the uh, handle now bolted in got that done today so and I've got the that little remove before flights just sitting there there's still some a piece of wire through there so someone can't accidentally pull that right now and uh, here's Jeff just doing a final little match trim so he's got both of those uh, wing fences there that go on the outboard lower edges of the wings and he's just um, using the sanding uh, sanding wheel there just to get them exactly the same shape uh, by holding them together so they're ready to be bonded on I believe and uh, Devon's just uh, doing a quick little job for us uh, making a tow bar 
for us so we can um, you know, steer the aircraft around. Right now we've got the nose wheel sitting on a dolly, but that's not really ideal. You've got to be able to tow it around. And looking up there in the parachute thing, there's the bottom end of the rocket. So you need to actually have like an exhaust tube in there. So I've got some of this aluminum tube. So that's going to come down like that. And then angle out a little bit, or ang angle aft, as it's going to be. So that piece will be there. And then you can see I've already, uh, with a hole saw, made a hole in the bottom there. And this is going to end up sort of going out there flush mount. I didn't quite have enough tube for that, so I have to... Um, get Brit to weld a little extra piece that I had on there but um, as you can see that one doesn't quite sit through there just because of the angle because it's a tight fit and I put this little small piece in there and you can see uh, how that pops out but ultimately once we get um, it welded up by Brit I'll uh, cut that off flush and then we'll do a little close out around the, the bottom side of it there so uh, it's a nice neat sealed off uh, exit and uh, speaking of getting stuff ready for Brit, here's these new um, bell cranks for the elevator controls that he has to weld up for us now. We're going to get him to weld up. And then I've got a couple of rods there for the um, the elevator actuators. I'm going to put them on the lathe and just uh, draw the one ends out so I can tap those. The other end's already done. And then these other little things, those are for the intake. And there's uh, Devin's rod that he created for the uh, tow bar. And uh, here I'm getting ready to put the seat mounts in, and well, along with the seats as well. So I've just put some masking tape down and gone back through and sanded over the keel there uh, just to get rid of the shininess so we can bond those seat mounts in. And this is how it looks like with the masking tape uh, removed. So that's pretty exciting to think that we're actually about to put the seats in and they won't be coming out after that. Um, that's a bit of a milestone. And there's just a look for you with the aircraft there sort of nosed in on the other side of the shop so that's our update for the first half of this week and there will be an update on Saturday and uh, I guess we'll have the seats in and doing a few other different things so join us then and uh, we'll see what we've been up to and uh, thanks again for watching mm -hmm.